Hey everybody, Shane back with you here. Welcome back. Excited about this one. This is Van Morrison's 1970 Intergalactic hit. This is Into the Mystic <clears throat> from the big, huge uh, Moondowns album in 1970. And um, I, oh, I've had this requested many a time. I'll send this out to Alan in here in Ottawa who asked for this a couple of years ago. And most recently, Mark in Patreon asked for this one. So Mark and Alan, thanks for that. And I'm glad we finally got around to doing it. I always get requests for, for this one. And I've done it a million times in private lessons. The toughest thing to get across in this song is not the chords. There's only four easy chords for us. The toughest thing is the strumming pattern. But I want to take you faithfully through that. and. Um, in the steps that I think you should maybe go about it, rather than going for all the embellishments and all the super cool uh, stuff, to go go for the basic feel first, and then we'll add the ornaments. We'll get it exactly like the record, and uh, just be patient with it. Um, I'll send you to patreon.com slash guitar at work to grab these sheets. Uh, patreon.com slash guitar at work. There's a ton of songs up there, I've lost count, and we'll do play-alongs as well. You'll be able to play along with a ton of my videos, and uh, a lot of people are joining us there, and it's a lot of fun to talk as well in, a, in that forum. So go grab those and we're on our way. Um, hey, let me play the intro just so you know what we're looking at here. So I'm going to go... That looks and sounds pretty fancy. Okay, it looks like this guy, it's like, wow, there's a lot going on. But you know what it is? There's 16th notes. It's all based around 16th notes. It's important you can count that. I'm just going to choke my strings here for a second. There are four strums per beat. What does that mean? One, two, three, four. Literally down, up, down, up equals one beat. One, E, and, ah. So it's effectively this. One, E, and, uh, two, E, and, uh, three, E, and. Let's call that the motor. You get the motor running. And then there will be some little little maneuvers with your left hand, tiny little embellishments, but they really come together because this guy is this constant, okay? It's really important that you can play 16th notes. As a matter of fact, I did a video two weeks ago preparing us, hopefully, for this particular song. Um, look that up. It's called More Strumming Drills. I'll link it somewhere in the description or around here somewhere. And uh, uh, we'll talk about that whack as well because that's a really important a percussive stroke that you're going to use in a lot of different songs. Um, so again, 16th notes. Um, now this is strange. I'm going to put a play along at the very beginning of the record of the video here. Play along at the very beginning. I'm going to do the fir first two verses and what I'm calling a bridge when it goes to the E minor. First, capo three. Okay, capo three. Uh, put a capo on a third fret. Your basic shapes. I think we all know them. C. There's a G. There's an E minor. And there's an F. And that's it. That's C. G. Doesn't matter how you play your G. E minor. And there's an F. You can use a bar chord F, you can use a regular F, whatever you want, okay? Uh, those are your four shapes. I don't think any of us are going to struggle too much with that. Maybe the F some of us are still working on, but this is a great song uh, to finally nail that down if you've been having trouble with it. Okay, so straight 16th. So I'm going to put the fabulous Beat Buddy on because he will be the law, okay? We're going to follow this guy. Just sit with me for a second. I'm going to sit on C. Now, how is that? Walk the chicken, walk the chicken, walk the chicken, walk the chicken. Saying walk the chicken really helps, okay? Oh, walk the chicken, walk the chicken. That's walk the chicken, okay? Instead of oh, one E and a two E and a three E and a lot of people stumble with that, myself included. So oh, walk the chicken, walk the chicken, walk the chicken, walk the chicken, walk. Now watch out. That's a fast drum. It's a slow tempo. It's only 85 beats a minute. Um, I'm using the country six pattern, um, and I'll tell you how to find that out all out in a second. Um, but that is a fast strum against a slow tempo. 85 is pretty slow, but we're subdividing. There are four attacks per beat. Walk the chicken, walk the chicken, walk the chicken. Now make sure you're not gripping your pick too hard. Okay? And getting at, I don't want to do it like really strident, harsh sound, because a lot of us, uh, at first, the faster we go, the harder we play. You gotta turn that off, okay? It should be whispery. I'm holding my pick so lightly that it threatens to fall. But it's quite the opposite. If I was to hold it really tight, I'd get snagged and the thing would go flying. So, hammer. Wait a second. Walk the chicken, walk the chicken. Yeah, just sitting on C with me. That's it. Now, later on, we're gonna add all the cool things you heard, all the embellishments. Now, I'm gonna play through the song. Now, every time you see a chord, there are four chickens. Meaning, here's one bar. One, two, every time you see a chord name is C. One, two, three, four. Okay, that's four chickens. Meaning, one chicken, walk the chicken, walk the chicken, walk the chicken. Say walk the chicken four times every time you see a chord written. If it's written twice, you do it eight times, right? 
Uh, that makes sense. I'll shut them out as we go. I'm going to go right to the end of that first uh, bridgey bit. And um, just to warm us up, then we'll go back and add all the detail. Okay, this is how I think you should go about it. Um, again, I've done this song a million times with people one on one. And when we go for the embellishments right away, we lose sight of the fact that it's really just. It's really just that. It really is just that with the odd little thing going on. That's the way you want to think about this one. So here's a top. I'm skipping the intro, going right to where the singer comes in. What? Two. Play along. Three. Here's a C. And then. Another C. Two more C's. Second line. Also younger. Then the sun. Here's a G. Bonnie Boat was one. I could see sailing to the it's hard not to put the embellishments in the second verse. Hark now. Hear the sailors cry. Chicken, walk the chicken. Two more C's. Smell the sea. Feel the sky. G come. Let your soul and spirit fly. C into the mystic. Now here's your bridge coming. E minor. F and Fago. Two C's and we'll be coming home. Another C. Two. E minor. With a flat horn. G. Double G. Yeah, good. Now two to C. And that's when he would be going into that third verse. Now you really should be able to do that. Um, as fundamental as it sounds, I know it's just down ups, but when we get into 16th notes, bad things can happen to good people. Meaning we, again, we usually it's digging in too hard. Remember the singer has got to get up over top of you. So I call them whisper strums, counterintuitive, but the lighter you hold that pick, um, the better your strumming is going to sound. I'm using a 1.14 thickness. That's a fairly thick pick. And what that does for me is if I was to use a thin pick, when I dig into accent, the thing just flexes. So I lose the energy I'm putting in. This, a thick pick and a really hard pick give you, it translates right away. If I want a little more energy, or a little more meat on this particular strum, it's gonna, it's gonna come through because the pick is not flexing. Um, okay, so you should be able to do that. Go back and rewind that if you need to. Get that under your belt before you get into these embellishments. We'll also add later, at the very end of the video, I'll, I'll throw in what I'm thinking are four of the biggest uh, lead guitar things. Those little guys, for those of you who want to stick around that are asking for more lead stuff, let's do that at the very end. There are four, oh, geez, there's a whole bunch of them actually, but the four that really stick out, uh, to me anyway, um, that you could use and reuse throughout the song if you're playing with somebody else. If you're playing by yourself, it's unlikely you'd throw them in because you'd have to give up on the strumming and uh, then the bottom kind of falls out. So, um, so what is going on with these embellishments? Um, jump it on a C, capo three. And if you start with your middle finger off that C, start with your middle finger off, um, the my first downstroke of that 16th note thing, first downstroke, I'm going to hammer on. The middle finger hammers on his rightful place on the C. Let's get a close up of that. So you get it off, he starts and off. Technically a C sus2 chord when he's off, it doesn't matter, it's just a riff. So that's a downstroke hammer. And then I'll get the, I'll get the motor running. So I'm just going to go, I'm going to leave him on for a second. Walk the chicken. Hear it? Now here's the thing. You do the downstroke. Uh, now this would be an up, but you're doing the hammer. So you still make the motion. This is the important part. You still make the motion of the upstroke, but this guy lands without you hitting the strings. And that's how he's gonna, he's gonna, be, uh, he's gonna be clearer. He's gonna sound clear. If you're not hearing your hammer, you may have to put a bit more energy into that guy, but usually what it is is not that. Usually what it is is your ring finger sympathetically moves over and chokes out that string. So try to stand him up nice and tall. So the motion continues because you're, you're keeping that, you're chopping down that tree. Right, hammer. So hammer, there's a hammer down up, but don't hit it on the way up. Yeah, I think it would be okay if you did hit it and then you took the hit out later. If you're, if you're having to think too much, and it's one of these things, see if that's good. Uh, so hammer. It just feels wrong to hit him on the upstroke, so all that coming in. So I'm just going to sit on that C, do the hammer. Hammer. That's the opening bit. 
you can hear him come off again for an extended period of time. Here it is right from the beginning. Hear that? Up, down, up, hammer. Up, down, up, hammer. He comes off on the upstroke. Up, down, up, hammer. So here's the top. Up, down, up, hammer. Off, 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 hammer. But again, this guy doesn't stop. Hammer. Off, hammer. Off, hammer. Beat by beat. Off, hammer. Off, hammer. Off, hammer. Off, hammer. Now he's going to stay off for quite a while. Here's the top. Uh-oh, choke. Before he comes off, there's a smack, a percussive stroke. I'll call it a whack. Um, be content at first. Again, I'll link that video that I did two weeks ago all about the whack. Master the whack. Uh, more strumming drills. Um, it's great to take it outside of the context of the song. You just sit there and work on it. But what it is in short here, um, the side of your hand is smacking against those strings. So you're getting... One, two. So on B2, one, two, one, two, and... And I get a real chopping effect. Instead of just landing there, I'm continuing with the strum. So the side of my hand hits that guy, and you cut you cut your pick through those deadened strings. So, uh, ah, ah, and it just gives you that snare sound. Okay, and you'll clearly hear that on the record. It really sticks out. Um, you now you might be getting, whoa, what's going on at this point? Maybe step back, rewind, stop tape there, go back and get it. Here it is from the top, very slowly. Three, four. Off. Again, top again. Three, four. Came off there. You hear that? Do it again. Top. Three, four. Hammer. Off. Hammer. Whack. And then after the whack, he's right off. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up. You really don't want to think of this one as up, down, up, down, up, down, up. If you're reading it in a magazine or something, you'll go crazy staring at all those ups and downs. Remember, the motor's running. Um, now, as we play through it, we'll do a full-length play-along and um, at some point here very soon. And uh, if your middle finger comes off at a different time than mine, it's not the end of the world. It is full of embellishments or, or of variations on the recording. It also gets kind of drowned out by other guitars. There's at least a couple of guitars going on in there doing fills and stuff. So um, you should be able to sort of simulate this one and, and play it. You're going to play it differently every time. So does he and so does whoever's playing guitar in there too. So um, I'm going to just sit on that C a little bit while longer. Just make sure you have it. Here's a C. Three and a four and a... Isolate that part three and a four. Hammer, whack, off. Hammer, whack, off. Hammer, whack, off with this guy. Hammer, whack, and off in the middle. Hammer, whack, off. And keep this guy going at all costs. It's tempting to go, and this guy stops down here. You're doomed. You're doomed because you need an up. Need that up on the way so you get another down. This guy has to keep moving. You could even um, you could simulate like if you can imagine it that way, it might be a good way to do it too, just to kind of force feed it into your musical center there. Now when it gets to the other chords, just sit on he doesn't do any noodles in that guy. There's a lead guy again doing the fancy bits in there, but the rhythm guitar player for the most part, to my ear anyway, is just sitting on the G. Not much going on in this It's really the C that that lick comes in quite a bit. Um, so believe it or not, let's do a full length playthrough and I think that's where you're going to benefit. You do not want to sit and woodshed on that as they used to call it, woodshed and drive yourself crazy. The best way to learn this one is in real time, keep the 16th notes rolling, okay? Keep the 16th rolling and um, that's the best way to do it. 
do it in time like we did in the very beginning of the, that little play along um, when in doubt resort to that okay you never get kicked out of the band for not nailing the little the little thing he's exacting at the same time he does okay so I really want to point that out um, but we'll get the big ones for sure um, so I'm gonna go to a, I'm gonna go with the uh, beat buddy on at 85 beats a minute and let's go all the way through this guy and then we'll get to the um, get to the embellishments toward the end and uh, I'm gonna get on here in a one two three Again, country six pound. This is singular sound. The fabulous beat buddy. I love it. I've been talking about it for a couple of years now. I know that I've been using it for five or six years, I think, since it, basically when it came out. I love it. And singular sound proudly affiliated with them. They've been very good to me. And it's just a whole lot more fun than a metronome. You'll see the links in the description below. And if you use that promo code GAW10, you get 10% off and help to support the channel. I appreciate it. Um, and I'll show you, I don't want to forget to tell you this. Um, how did I know what pattern to use? A lot of people ask, if you go to the Singular Sound website and uh, you go to the Beat Buddy menu, pull that down, you'll see a song matching tool. And I just typed in Into the Mystic and sure enough, it came up Into the Mystic, told me what pattern to use. Uh, you, it said, for the Beat Buddy, use Country 6. For the Beat Buddy Mini, use uh, whichever one it was, I've forgotten, but um, I've got a full Beat Buddy here, so I'm using the Country 6 pattern at 85 beats a minute. And uh, it's just a ton of fun without, you know, it's just more fun than a metro, more realistic. So here it is all over through. The intro is six bars. Help me count that through. So I'm going to let this guy go. I'm going to count us in. One, two, three, four. Here we go. Stay on C. Before the wind. Also younger than the sun. G. The bonnie boat was one. And we sailed C into the mystic. On and off. Second verse. Park now here. Sailors cry. Smell the sea, feel the sky, here's a G coming. Let your soul and spirit fly. See, into the missing. Bridge, E minor. When that foghorn F blows. See, I will be coming home. E minor. Far going low. G, I want to hear it. Two G's. Vocals way up high here. Now C, verse I. Want to rock your gypsy soul. Another C. Just like way back. Another C. The days of old. Now G coming. And magnificently we will flow. Back to C. Into the mystic. Now instrumental section coming. Stay on your C. One. Two, three, C coming. The horns are in. Four. There's two C's. Two more. Three. Four. There's a G coming. And back to C. Cover me now. I gotta scroll. One, two, E minor. Page two, E minor. Bridge. We're not F. Five horn low. C. I'll be coming home. Another C. E minor. F. Double G. There's a C coming. An I. Last verse. Another C. Another C, second line. Just like way back. C in the days of old G. Together we will flow back to a C into the mystic. Now here's your outro coming. Stay on C. Alright, your outro now. Four C's. Two. There's three. Here comes four. G here. Back to C. Last line. Back to G. Get ready to stop on C after this one. Two, three, four, C. And 
and they stop clean on the seat. I hope you did okay with that, but mostly I hope you kept going. If you're, as I was saying, if your middle finger is popping off that C at a different, slightly different time than mine is, um, that's okay for now until you know exactly where it is. I should tell you if I haven't already, it always comes off on the upstroke. We're like up down, so it's always coming off on the up, and the hammer always happens on the downstroke. So that might limit it for you. You don't have to think about it. But remember, base it off that hammer. Hammer, off, hammer, so hammer, off, hammer, off. But this guy is a machine, okay? Big deal, for sure. I would go back, rewind that, stop tape, do it as many times as you need to. Again, head to patreon.com slash guitar work. There are two, two pages of song sheet for you, and also the details page, uh, which we'll get to now. This is the some of the, the ornaments and the fills that you're going to hear in there for sure. So let's get that handy. And um, I've got it actually queued up. When you hear, there's a lead guitar that comes in at, uh, I've got now on here, at 11 seconds. Okay, I've written a time code in the detail sheet at 11 seconds, you're getting fill number one. And here it is here. I'm gonna get close to this iPad so you can hear it. I hope you can hear this. That one right there, hear that again? That's fill number one. So what is that? So I'm gonna load up here. The numbers, the tablature, are from the capo, okay? It's from the capo that we're talking when we're looking at that. Um, I'm gonna bar the third fret, the top two strings, top two strings like that, with my first finger. I'm gonna put my ring finger on the fifth fret of the G. Fifth fret from the capo, remember the numbers are from the capo. So there's my first finger barring the top two strings. Ring finger is on the G string at the fifth fret. And you're gonna, I'm gonna play that G string all alone. You see the five written there. A pair of threes, they're barred, you can get that. And I'm gonna hammer. Pinky, the ha hammer the pinky on the B string. So you get this. I'm gonna move this out of the way. I'm gonna bonk it. So I'm just, uh, I sit there. So I, it's only your pinky that's moving. So that's five. Here's a pair of threes. There's a little H written over top of that, and a little slower indicator. That the H means hammer. So you get this. I'm gonna drag the pinky up one fret and get this. All based around that. Here's again. Whoop. Now I'm gonna drag that pinky over and it's supposed to sound harsh. Slide the pinky back. You'll see SL written back to the five. Okay, so in time. Now if I put the let me put the magic looper on here for a second. And loop studio, that's as easy as this. This is the Aerial Slooper again by Singular Sound. I love this thing. Big graphic screen. Can't go wrong. This is the gold edition. Silent buttons. I love it. I'm always around microphones and doing these videos. And the buttons are completely silent. Love it. So I'm just going to sit. Now that embellishment, that, sorry, that lead line, that fill happens on a C chord. So let me do this one. I'm just going to start recording here now. That's our C, and here's the fill. You hear that? Okay, good. It's nice to have the looper do doing that uh, because it's hard to know what it's going to sound like um, when you're just playing it without benefit of accompaniment, right? So that's a big deal. That's number one. We'll skate through these rather quickly. Um, some of you like the lead stuff, some of you don't. It's an important skill, I think, but some of you just want to sing and play. That's totally fine, too. The second one is when a, the band goes to the G. And you're going to see this shape here. It's this guy. Uh, that's it there. So I'm way up here on the seventh fret, seventh fret of the G and seventh fret of that high E. And that shape is pretty darn popular. I'm gonna play both those notes. And what do I do with the B string that's in the middle? I'm just folding over a little bit so I don't get in the way, or so I do get in the way, I should say, so he doesn't ring. So I can strum three strings and only hear two. And then drag down. That same shape drags down. Now you'll have, if you've never slid like that, you'll have to decide how much pressure is reasonable because if you get too much pressure, you're just gonna get stuck or squeaky or it just hurts and it's uncomfortable. There's a, enough pressure to keep the notes ringing, but also uh, not so much pressure that I can't slide. So here. 
And now it resolves here. I'm going to go down one fret, middle finger, to the fourth fret of that G. And then my first finger is going to the third fret of that highest string. And there's really only two shapes in this system. There's that one and that one. So I'm now on four and three, as you'll see in your tab. I'm going to grab those sheets. That is this. And they're hitting the G. And you'll hear that. Remember, it's a completely different guitar doing those fills than the guy strumming. Hey, so watch out for that. That was number two. Number three is very much like number one. I'm going to load up with the same shape. Look at that. So we got five on the G, three and three on the high E and the B string. Again, just like nice little crescendo there. That's what that guy is. So it's five. I'll put on the C again. That's just a C you're hearing there. Very much like the first one. So um, you could learn the first and the third, or you could just get away with knowing one. There's several variations through the song on that particular idea. So it's if you know it one way, you can kind of noodle with it, and it'll sound authentic enough anyway. Uh, number four is maybe the biggest one. When he hits the E minor, you hear this guy. It's way up in the mix. Eh? It just jumps out at you like that. Uh, again, this, this system, which are called six. You're on E. The band hits an E minor, and the lead guy is the open G string, then the high E string open. Then a second fret G, second fret high E, so you get. And I'm gonna drag that middle finger up and end up on that same shape we had earlier. That's four on the G and three on the high E. So that's this. Okay, that's it. And that's down, but down, but down. Ba -da 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 -da. So, that guy there, you'll clearly hear that. So you want to get those in for sure and then um, practice them along. But don't let the hard stuff stop you from playing the song. If you have to go back to the very beginning of this video and just play the easy strumming version, it will become the harder version, okay? It's almost like you got to get tired of the easy way before you start. Oh, there it is, because you don't have to think anymore, right? You so maybe you get so tired of just strumming straight sixteenths that you're itching to get something moving, and your middle finger, okay. But if you're sitting there doing this, down, 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 that's an awful way to pick up this song. You don't want to do that, okay? Um, and I'll refer again to that video I did two weeks ago that'll help you with the chop and all of that. So different approach today, but I think an important one. I wouldn't say I've been avoiding this song. What I would say is I knew it would be harder to talk about the strumming than a lot of songs we've ever done. We've done a couple of hundred songs on this channel. And um, I think uh, this is a tough one to talk about the strumming because when I hear people say in videos and other ways, well, you just have to feel it. Well, that's fine if you know what you're doing, right? Yes, you do just have to feel it, but you have to have a few things under your belt first, right? So don't go too mathematical on this one. Get in there with the recording and all that and with this video over and over again. So I want to thank you for coming back. Thank you for the thumbs up and subscribing. That has helped meant the world here on YouTube. I appreciate the thumbs up and subscribing are huge. And it's been a lot of fun to hear from you. Again, send it to patreon.com slash guitar work. There's a pile of songs up there. Just go, you can go grab stuff. It doesn't have to be a lifelong commitment and we can communicate there. Let me know how you're doing. Grab a Beat Buddy and or an Arrow Slooper. They work so beautifully together. It's just fantastic. It's a ton of fun. It's like having a band here and uh, it's just, it's way better fun than a mic with a metronome. And you can use that promo code GAW10. We'll get you 10% off and help to support this channel. I appreciate it. And uh, hey, I'll just take it out of here with that strum. See if you can join me. I'll just take it out of here with the groove. Eight, two, ow. Da 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 da